Okay, what's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to an Easter Sunday edition of Morning Scone presented by Brock, Baton's Orthopedic Clinic. What's going on, y'all? Happy Easter. Hope uh, your uh, Easter weekend is going fantastic. Uh, if you are celebrating uh, with friends and family, uh, God bless everybody today. Hope it's uh, an awesome, awesome day to celebrate. Uh, beautiful day, beautiful holiday, and I uh, hope everybody's doing great. Uh, probably a shorter show today. Um, just because it's it's Easter and uh, the Easter Bunny visited Drew, which was great. I know he's very excited, but a lot of his fun stuff, and uh, we're gonna have you know family day and all this stuff today. So, um, how about that? Women's uh, basketball advances to the Elite Eight. They uh, got a big lead, blew it, and then uh, really clamped down the final four minutes and got it done. So, congrats to Kim Mulkey and the squad. Um, they advance to the Elite Eight, so they'll take on Iowa uh, tomorrow, Monday, in a rematch of the last year's national championship game. So pretty cool that um, uh, we get a rematch of the national championship game, and we'll see how it uh, uh, how it all goes. So um, yeah, man. And then with all the stuff surrounding yesterday, with the column from from. Uh, Ben Bolch at the LA Times, which is interesting because Ben Bolch um, came on the show several times when LSU and UCLA were playing uh, that year before 2021. So I've had Ben Bolch on the show before, um, and he he kind of uh, drew the ire of Kim Mulkey. And then uh, the the piece in the Washington Post post uh, published yesterday as well, which was um, relatively benign. I, I don't know that there was um, it, it came across to me more as a uh, a feature article about how Kim Mulkey loves to win. Okay. I mean, um, it's, it's still kind of stunning to me how, how people uh, cast her as a villain when really just, she wants to win. Um, no different than Saban or Jay Johnson or any other great coach that does that to do to win. Anyway. Um, and then a uh, baseball, of course, speaking of Jay Johnson, baseball got swept. Super disappointing, man. Uh, you know, a four to one in the fourth, and um, you couldn't hold it. So, and, you know, you had an opportunity in the ninth. Um, Tommy White missed what would have been a go ahead homer by uh, by a few feet. Uh, it was foul, but um, anyway, um, you know, jump wasn't wasn't great. Um, Ackenhausen gave up three runs. So, you know, the guys that you were counting on to to get you a win in game three uh, couldn't get it done. So, some soul searching, man, for LSU. And Jay keeps searching, looking at the lineup. I mean, he he moved Tommy White up to the leadoff spot yesterday, which the I understand if you're trying to get somebody who puts the ball in play and uh, gets on base in the leadoff spot to get it. But Tommy White's also your run producer. Like he let off the game with a homer yesterday. So, I mean great but you want tommy white hitting homers with guys on base um ashton larson got a start he was one for three uh hit, hit up ashton larson at the homer uh yesterday um we saw jake brown get the start in center which i'm totally fine with um uh no i'm sorry bingham started in center brown uh went in after fry pinch hit for larson that's what it was and they moved over and they moved Bingham to the left. Sorry, that's I'm recalibrating my brain. Um they caught Neil, who was two for four. Again, like whether you want to catch Neil or Malazzo, uh, Travinsky's got a DH. Um, even though he was 0 for four with a strikeout. Travinsky's scuffling right now, but um if he's gonna scuffle at the plate, I you don't need his defense in there. So um anyway. Disappointing day, man. Tigers are two and seven um, in conference play. So, you know, like we talked about, uh, you know, you you'd like to try to hit the halfway point somewhere around five and ten or six and nine, um, and you have two more weekends to to get there. But um, you know, if you can win this weekend at home against Vanderbilt and maybe get one or two at Tennessee, 
that puts you at five or six at the halfway point. You're really mirrored what Tennessee was a year ago, where um, you know they were five and ten to start league play. They finished uh, with sixteen league wins, which I think is doable for this LSU team when you look at the second half of conference of conference play. Um, you know, and see see what can happen in the postseason. So. And someone asked, you know, is the se- is the season over? No, like the season's not over. The season's not slipping away. Which slipping away is like the opportunity to be a national seed. Like that's all all but gone. The um, well, I guess unless if you I, theoretically, I mean, it, you only got seven losses. I mean, you you could go on a on a scorcher, but um, in, unlikely. It would have to be like a two thousand eight type run. Um, you know, the SEC championship is slipping away. A national seed is slipping away. The you know, a regional is not completely gone, but teetering, right? So uh, a hosting a regional, I should say. So, you know, just what are your goals as you check them off? Well, as the deeper you dig your hole, the harder it is to dig out to get to those things that you're trying to get to. So in any event, let's say some good mornings here. Uh, Edward O, the Nuss Bus Driver, what's going on? Christian, happy Easter. No Sweat Sports, good morning. Randall Offrecht, happy Easter. Good morning. Kelly Gross. Bubba Smith, Rick Hess. Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. Hope it's a great one. Uh, Clayton not celebrating baseball, uh, no doubt. Ball, yeah, here's the good thing, though. Uh, <laughs> Craig, fire Jay Johnson. Yeah, I don't think they're going to fire Jay Johnson. Uh, Brett Gidry, let's go, girls. Yep, Shania Twain. Um, uh, yeah, they're everyone. I mean, it is interesting, though, to see how much... Uh, it, it will be interesting for me just as a test case to see how much uh, equity and goodwill a national championship gets you, right? So Jay wins the national championship last year. You start this year two and seven in league play. People are like, what is it? Dalton Barnett, good morning, Matthias. Uh, I've had your whiskey recommendations wondering what you got for something getting into wine. Oh, for someone getting into wine, sorry. Yeah, man, um, I can't say that I know a ton about wine. I love to drink wine, and the couple times we've gone to Napa, it's been interesting to learn about um, that process and different things. Uh, here's what I would tell you. Uh, 2020, not a great vintage because there were fires, and so uh, the yield was uh, was light, and uh, what did come of it wasn't great. So I'll try to go, if you're looking for a, a vintage a year, right, you would go pre-2020. Do you like reds or whites? You know, I think that that matters a lot based on what the conversation we're having. But um, the thing that I always drink is Bonanza because Bonanza is basically $20 Camus. So same winery. It's delicious. Um, so I always have Bonanza here. Hope that helps. Uh, and Dalton Burnett said hashtag Team Drew. Thank you, man. Uh, Jay Borden, what's going on? Christian, women's Elite Eight games are all one versus three. Yeah, the... Um, Women's basketball is a lot like college football in that it is very top-heavy. You don't have a lot of parity in the sport. Um, you have a very, very sharp delineation between the haves and the have-nots. Lee Feinswalk said it on AFR this week, if you missed it. There was only one in the first – no, I'm sorry, there were two. In the, in, the, um, in the round of 64 and then the round of the 32, there were only two upsets, only two instances where a, a higher seed beat a lower seed. One of them was Middle Tennessee beating Louisville at, in, in Baton Rouge. Uh, oh, really? Clayton Knight said LA Times revised their article. Did they uh, eliminate the, the dirty debutante piece? Interesting. Randall, what's your thoughts on Braswell getting better at the plate? Well, you know, Jay said it. Braswell was in the, um, in the fall was one of the best players. I, I think Braswell has ability. I don't know that I'm just counting on Braswell to be like a 320 hitter, you know, who's going to, you knock in 50 runs this year. I just, I don't know that that's him. Um, I like Braswell much more at the bottom of the lineup than I do at the top. And so, you know, a nice day yesterday hitting in the, uh, in the eight hole. So, yeah, I mean, I like, I like Braswell at the bottom of the order, much more to do at the top. The problem is there, are, you don't have a very obvious table setter at the top of your lineup. That's a big problem for this offense right now. Uh, Murder Giraffe, good morning. Cajun Country, happy Easter. Have a great day. Mimosas at 9.30. Did E-Rock turn the house into an Easter bunny den? Uh, not exactly an Easter bunny den, but we do have Easter decorations up. And um, 
uh, and Drew woke up and got you know the Easter Bunny got Drew his his Easter basket and all that sort of stuff. So uh, he got some fun toys and some you know pool like swim stuff, a new a new towel, a beach towel, and a swimsuit. So Easter Bunny did good for Drew. Ryan Pike, do all the games within a series count the same, or do future opponents' rankings put more weight on being their Friday night guy? Do all games within a series count the same, or do future opponents' rankings put more weight on being their Friday night guy? Um, no, I mean, if you're talking about the standings, they all count the same. Um, I mean, it's it. I mean, it is just it's binary. You there's a you have a, a conference win loss record, and whoever wins the most conference games wins the league, right? Now you have an RPI, and so like LSU's RPI, um, I haven't checked it, but let's see what's updated. Um. Let's see, college baseball RPI. Clemson's got the top RPI in the country. Arkansas's three. Where's LSU? LSU's 29 right now in the RPI. LSU lost yesterday and actually went up a spot in the RPI from 30 to 29 just because you played Arkansas, which is the number three RPI team in the country. So you had three games against Arkansas. So... All quad one road games. So RPI is interesting, but I, I I'm not sure if that's exactly what you're um what you're saying. Um let's see. Uh Cajun Country article was revised. It was his revision that was published. Okay. I y'all, we did family stuff yesterday, so I wasn't locked into a lot. Uh Vinay asking for the game coin update. I'm gonna get it for you, man. I promise, but I did not have the conversation yesterday. Uh, Edo, I think the Washington Post edited that article after Kim spoke about potentially suing them. I don't think there's any doubt that happened. Um, like I, I would be stunned if it happened to the contrary, because if you're an editor and keep in mind, I, I don't know if y'all remember this, but during COVID, um, the Washington Post was sued and agreed to a like a nine figure settlement. Uh, how much was it? Um, Washington Post settles lawsuit with family of Kentucky teenager. Washington Post settled a lawsuit brought by the parents of a teenager who alleged the news coverage of a teen's encounter with a Native American activist on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial last year was defamatory. Uh, imagine that. It doesn't have the terms of the settlement here, but I saw somewhere that it was like nine figures. Um, It doesn't say here what the settlement was. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Point being, if you've already lost a defamation lawsuit uh, or, or settled a defamation lawsuit, y even if you were careful before, you're going to be doubly careful to make sure that you're not overstepping. So I would be very surprised if it wasn't um, edited after Mulkey's comments. Jordan Haddad, happy Easter from Santa Fe. Okay, Taz, what's up? If I'm the Saints, I trade back and pick up an extra two and three, being that we need help in all areas. Maybe Taz, unless if there's a player there in round two that you love. Uh, unless you're talking about round one, which I'm absolutely making a pick at 14 uh, this year. So I would flatly disagree with you there. I because, because we're expecting four or five quarterbacks to come off the board before the Saints pick, meaning there will be a great player at a position of need of value there on the board at 14. So I would absolutely make my pick at 14. Patrick Berglas, good morning. Uh, Tigers with our win yesterday. Go Tigers with our win yesterday. Hope Oregon State wins today. The refs better be fair and competent tomorrow. Bart, what's going on? Malazzo not playing this weekend blows my mind. I agree with you, Bart. Um, I've said that a good bit. 
um, and I'm sure some of you agree. For me, I'm at a point where it's like I think I think Jay. We talked about this yesterday. I think I think Jay has. There's like a fork in the road. Do you continue playing your young, really talented guys? Uh, two and scramble, please. It's okay if you already were uh, to do them over easy. That's fine. Thanks. Um, do you keep playing your young guys and getting them experience to get them better and you take your lumps? Um, Ethan Fry, Ashton Larson, Stephen Milam, L L uh, Jake Brown. A lot of real young guys that you're very excited about their future. Um, so Cam Johnson, again, earlier this week. Uh, was it Thursday or was it the Friday night game? I think it was the Thursday night game um, where – it was Thursday, where he went into a tough situation and walked in a run. Well, you're getting this experience, right? Kate Anderson. So you keep leaning on your really young, talented guys to get them experience, or do you play your veteran guys who have been there and aren't the moment isn't going to be too big for them? Um, that's why I'm surprised we haven't seen um, the, the veteran lineup. I mean, that's quite honestly what I – because Jay wants to win every game, but it's it's a it's a weird juxtaposition where you have a lineup, a roster full of super talented prospects, and you feel like you've got to keep them happy. And I think there is some of that at play. I certainly think there was that at play the first month of the season, the non-conference, where you were, where you were every day was a different lineup because you were trying to get all these guys experience. Um, so you know, look, Jay Johnson's an amazing coach, like. They're going to figure it out. They're going to be fine. Maybe this team doesn't win a national championship. Maybe this team doesn't go to Omaha. But, like, I don't think this is any, like, uh, commentary of the program or anything like that. I just think it's a situation where you lost Skeens and Floyd uh, out of your rotation, and you lost seven uh, everyday position players your top, and seven of your top hitters from a year ago. You had massive turnover from a team that won the national championship. And a lot of veteran guys, not only Cruz and Morgan, you know, who were juniors on that team, but Joe Bear and Beloso and Dugas and Thompson and guys that were, you know, talented guys, but veteran guys who played a ton of ball, right? So, um, do you play your experienced guys, or do you play your young, talented guys to get them to get them experience and take your lumps along the way? That's kind of where I think where Jay is is you know, <clears throat> is weighing right now. Hey, Dad, good morning. Happy Easter. Looking forward to seeing y'all in a little bit. Jason Horn, good morning. Happy Easter. Austin Kidder, good morning. All I want for Easter is some consistent offense. It was nice to finally beat Sissy Blue in something. <laughs> uh, the old Ed Ogeron, Sissy Blue comment about UCLA. You Sissy Blue shirt. Um, Brett Gidry, Patrick Burglass, uh, Brent St. Germain. Good morning, happy Easter. The LA Times columnist who trashed LSU women's basketball should be shaded himself. The LA Times should reprimand him for writing that column. Well, keep in mind, Brent, the LA Times isn't going to reprimand him for writing a column. The LA Times has an editor that would have had to read that, edit it, approve it, and publish it. So it's not like you just write something and put it on and it gets published without it going through any checks and balances. So there are far more levels of accountability. Like you pitch a story and say, hey, here's the angle I'm thinking about taking. And you write it. And then you know, you might have like an editor, an associate editor, read it, goes through before it ever gets published. Um, Ball, y'all, great comp of Saban. So many stories of him ripping into people on his way to title as he celebrated for it. Thomas Primo, good morning. Uh, Lama Lance, what would be your ideal lineup and starting rotation going forward? Um, I would catch Malazzo. I would uh, have Jones at first, Milam at second, White at third, Braswell at short. Um, with a caveat, because if Braswell struggles, I would put Milam at short and Pearson at second. Um, and then in left, I would have Bingham in uh, in outfield. I'd have Bingham in left. Um. I'm tempted to give Jake Brown a shot in center. Um, but if not, I would put Kling in center because he's still an elite glove and I want his glove out. I want his glove in center field. And then I'd have Pearson to right.
Um, Carly Cat, what's going on? Still behind Coach Johnson. See, yeah, man, it's tough. Look, it's a tough start to conference play. There's no way around it. And I don't know how many times we said, like, please clip this, earmark it, remember this. How many times we said about this the first half of conference play with the schedule? Like, we knew that the first half of conference play was going to be really challenging. And you have two more weeks of Vandy and then at Tennessee. And then you get to play Missouri. Um, and then you're home against Auburn. And then you're home against A&M, which is a good team, but it's a winnable series at home. Then you're at Alabama, and you're home against Ole Miss. Like, it lightens up considerably the rest of the way. You just got to make it to the halfway point and not be completely broke. Uh, Guy Brooks, good morning. Go Tigers. Happy Easter. Bart, St. Germain. See, Bart? Brent was just before you. Brent, Bart, right there. Or maybe it was Bart that said Brent. Uh, Earl, good morning. How about the Lady Tigers? Yeah, man. Fired up for them. Good for Kim Mulkey and the squad. You know, it looked like they were going to – um they, they had pulled away there in the third quarter. Um, and then, boy, they let UCLA back into it with a barrage of threes and then um, closed it out in the final uh, final four minutes. Really strong showing there in his final final four minutes of the game. Uh, Jordan Haddad need to come back down there with a the bat and get the lineup going. <laughs> Cliff Nelson, good morning. Happy Easter. Flying back to NOLA today. All right, man. Uh, safe travels to you and uh, – and whoever you're traveling with, if you've got family with you, if you're solo. But either way, happy Easter to you, man. See you soon. Uh, Wendell Norman, Devin Kelly, good morning. Earl, bring smoke back. Oh, jeez. <laughs> We've jumped the shark. Uh, Aaron Horensby, Tom Granite, good morning, y'all. Jeff McKithen, good morning. Happy Easter. Taz, to show how the media have darlings, uh, Trevor Lawrence and Daniel Jones have identical stats in all areas, but Jones, a bust, and everyone ready to give Trevor an extension. Um, I would also point out, though, Taz, that Trevor Lawrence was drafted one overall because he went to the worst team in the league and arguably the worst franchise in the league. And um, the Giants have certainly had more more success and stability. Um. I think if you're being objective, Taz, you could very clearly notice the difference between the two. Timothy Fontenot, good morning. Bart, seems like other than Milam, if you cannot hit a home run, you will not play much. So, Bart, that's kind of part and parcel the issue that we're talking about. Like, you have your boppers, your run producers in the lineup, which you don't have are your table setters, right? You don't have guys right now that can get on base for white Travinsky Jones. Like that's the problem they're running into. And because you have these guys up and down the light up with so much swing and miss, it's kind of the feast or famine. You, th that's why you strike out 19 times on Thursday and, you know, thir a dozen times or whatever it was on, on, on Friday. Um, what were the strikeout numbers yesterday? Uh, down yesterday. So seven, you struck out seven times yesterday, but I mean, if you can't put – like, that's why I want Malazzo in the lineup. I mean, Malazzo is – Malazzo has proven to be a contact hitter. He's not going to drive the ball out of the yard, but he's going to go up the middle. He's going to go the other way. He's going to put the ball in play. Um, and he's worked a lot on that. You know, Malazzo's hitting three thirty three. Um, So, yeah, man. You give me give me the veteran guy who puts the ball in play, who's your best defensive catcher, like uh, who has come through for you in Omaha. Like, yeah, man, give give me the guys that have been there. You need a little more of that mix, I think. Carl the Cat, great press conference by Coach Mulkey. Thanks to the LA Times for the bulletin board material. You know the weird thing about the Kim Mulkey press conference is um, the question about the Post article came from Nancy Armour, and. I mean, Nancy Armour is um, <clears throat> like picture whatever in your mind you think uh, an an awful biased 
far left leaning member of the media is like that's Nancy Armour. And Nancy Armour is the one coming to Kim Mulkey's defense. Like she's got a column up right now defending Kim Mulkey saying it is a double standard because there's no way we would be treating a, ma a male coach like this, which is true. I mean, we've we've run through tons of examples of it. Um, it Kim Mulkey is painted with a different brush. And it's but it's it's because of the ecosystem in which she lives, not only because she's female, but for all the things we said before, she's. Well, I all, all the things that, that I've said. Uh, Blake Morgan, uh, they did, but it's too late. They already said it. What, well, babe? All right, breakfast is ready, y'all. Breakfast is ready. If I missed you, my apologies. Um, thanks so um, thanks so much for watching. Um, to everybody whose comments I missed, I apologize, but. Uh, it is Easter Sunday, and I hope you have an awesome, awesome day with family and uh, and celebrating uh, the resurrection and uh, just a a beautiful day in uh, in the Christian tradition. So, y'all have an awesome day, and uh, wish great things for all of you and your family today. Please smash the like button if you're watching there live. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, Facebook, like the map is going to page, share the post. We appreciate it. Y'all have a great, fantastic, beautiful, wonderful Sunday. Weather should be awesome today, too. I think I think it's supposed to be awesome today. So uh, enjoy the day, and uh, and we'll see you tomorrow.